Hey everyone, if you're watching this video, then you're probably interested in using my animation tool called Pencil Test Plus. This tool was created to mimic the old way of animation where you used to flip animation paper back and forth. Uh, this helps feel the animation out and helps you see the animation in action as you're animating. So I think a lot of people who have done animation like that in the past will find this tool very useful and newcomers will also find that it will teach them about the animation process and maybe even help them animate a little bit better. This, t this video will go over all the tools and how to use them properly. Now the reason you see uh, the keyboard on the bottom here is because Pencil Test Plus uses the, uses the keyboard in a specific way that lets you flip animation paper as if you were doing it with paper back in the old days. So let's just go over all the tools. I'll try to make this video as short as possible so you can understand how everything goes. Over here we have just basic uh, buttons here. Uh, these are just to see the hockeys and we'll go over all these hockeys soon. Uh, right besides the tutorial video which you're watching right now and next to it is just a site that's mine that you can go check out if you'd like. On the top left over here is the export button. This button just obviously lets you export the animation that you have created and it'll, that you save it as a GIF file on your computer. The BG button on the left over here just lets you draw on the background so when you click it'll highlight it pink and when you draw, uh, basically you could draw a scene at this point and um, when you animate, you can animate on top of that scene. So while this is highlighted orange over here, you'll be able to draw the background scene. So I'll just draw something really quick. I don't want to waste your time. So here's like a tree and this is sort of like a scene that you could be animating. To unselect the background just go ahead and click one of the frames down here. Now these are the frames and as I add more frames from the plus over here you'll see that I'm adding more frames. What's happening when I click the plus sign over here is it's adding a frame after my current frame and then selecting it. So when I hit the plus sign over here you can see I added a new frame and it selected it so all the other frames gets pushed back. This plus sign on the left over here will do the opposite. It will add a frame before your current frame. And it will push the, the rest back. And the minus sign over here just deletes frames. So also, uh, let's just over here, there's uh, these tools. This is more complicated. I'll be going over this at the end. This will change the style that you want to animate at. So you can either animate at in-between style or the key frame style. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced. I'll go over it at the end of the video. Over here, you only have two options of pencils. You have a light blue pencil and you have a black pencil over here. And these are the only two options I've provided. Uh, you could choose the size of the pencil by selecting the size of the circle that you see and the one you feel is most fit for what you want to use. And underneath this red area over here, this is the eraser and you can go ahead and select the size of the eraser and go ahead and erase. If I'm on the background, I can go ahead and erase part of the background if I'd like to. So let's go ahead also let's go on talk about the left side over here this is the playback area and what that area is is um, you can play the animation so if I play you could see that the animation is being scrubbed through you could change the frame rate that you're animating at so right now it's at 24 frames per second the span this is interesting let me just add a bunch of frames uh, let's just draw a bunch of frames so everything becomes a little bit more clear so I'll stop the playback by hitting the stop sign over here there's my pencil and I'm gonna go ahead and select, you can scrub frames over here by clicking the left arrow and right arrow key next to the question mark, uh, the brackets rather. So I'm just going ahead and draw numbers so it's easy to see the frames. This is frame one, this is frame two, three, four, five, and six. And those are all my frames and if I scrub through them you can see those are the frames I'm drawing at. Now if I hit the play button, that will play through all the frames because the span is set to all of them. So I could set the span to minus one, which means I'll start minus one from the first frame. That's why it's not displaying the frame earlier. And I could do the same for any frame post your current frame, which is plus one I'll add. So now it's only going between the three that are that are uh, one frame before the current frame and one frame after the current frame. Now let's say it's playing too fast for you. Uh, what you could do is you can go ahead and change the speed and slow it down and that will just slow down so you can kind of see it more clearly as you're animating. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about is when you have the play button selected you will always draw on the current frame. So you can actually draw while the animation is playing. So right now I know I'm on frame 3 so I could see the 3 over here and I know that that's a frame drawing. So as I'm not doing anything but starting to draw while uh, it's playing and you could see I could just draw right beside it and I could do whatever I want. So I could actually draw my animations while I'm watching them play through. 
So to stop that, you can go ahead and press the square again, the stop, the stop icon. The reset button over here will just reset all these back to normal. And, and here are my frames. So let's go ahead and just erase what I did over there. And let's add a few more frames after the six. So let's go ahead and... Now you can use the plus and minus keys over here to add frames and remove frames. So I just want to add a few frames. So let's add frame seven right after frame six and eight, nine, and 10. So now we have a whole bunch of frames and you can see as the frames go way off into the distance, they start to fade away. Let's talk about now um, the actual hockeys. So if you look at my hockeys right here, all these buttons, as you can see from one, Q, A, Z, they're all the same color because they actually do the same thing. Same for uh, one to Z or two to X, three to C and four to V. They all do the same thing because the way you hold the keyboard is like so. And if you have a big hand, you can stretch it out and go ahead and put your fingers on the numbers and all the way down here if you have a small hand, I guess. And the space key is also part of it all. So what it does is my pinky right now would control how many frames it would, what I call it is peaking. It will let you peak two frames behind your current frame. So I'm holding my pinky down, as you can see. And it lets me peak two frames behind my current frame. And as soon as I release it, it pops back to my current frame. My, my ring finger right here will do one frame behind. My middle finger will be the current frame. So it doesn't really do anything right now. And my index finger will be one frame post my current frame. And as soon as I release it, it pops back to frame six, which is my current frame. And my thumb is two frames post my current frame. So it might sound confusing, but essentially what it's supposed to be doing is as you roll your fingers across the keyboard, you could see the frames in action and it's just like when you're animating on paper you'd flip it with almost the same amount of frames so as you're doing this you can go ahead and kind of see the animation I know I'm on frame 6 so let's say I have a ball in frame 5 so I could draw a ball in frame 5 I'll draw a ball in frame 7 and now I'm just rolling between 5, 6 and 7 and I can kind of see this circle and I can kind of animate it as I see it move forward Now, on top of that, while you're hitting the play button over here, so let's add on frame nine a circle that will that will be with follow to frame seven. So the circle under frame nine. Now, while I'm hitting the play button, I'm gonna set set the span to minus one and plus one, and change the speed to let's say 0.25. So now you can see my current frame is frame eight, and w right now I see frame seven, eight, and nine. And while it's playing, I can go ahead and just draw the circle in, and I can kind of feel it out as it's playing through. So that's really nice to do. And while it's playing, you can also cancel out the playing, or override it rather, by hitting the keys again. And as soon as you release, it will start playing again. Now, this, this also includes onion skinning, so let's go ahead and stop that. Um, onion skinning, the way it's done is, if you click the number under your current frame, so right now my current frame is 5, it will cancel the onion skinning, but if I click anything after my current frame on the number area, it will add onion skinning up to that point. So only right now I have one, two, three, four frames post my current frame. And you can do the same with onion skinning before. And while it's doing that, you can still scrub and still animate while it's scrubbing, which is really nice. So that's the gist of Pencil Test Plus. Now I'm going to go over this little area here. Now what this does in between mode, if you go to hockey's over here, you can read it on the bottom. What it describes it as is if you're in key mode, you will draw onto the peaked frame while using key mode. So right now I'm peaking, let's say I'm on frame five, I'm peaking to frame seven. That means when I start drawing, I draw on that keyframe. So right now I'm drawing on frame seven. Um, but let's say I'm in in-between mode. So right here, I clicked over here and switched it to in-between mode. If I go to hockey's, my hockey's described uh, in-between mode as peak frame snaps to current frame while drawing using in-between mode. So I'm hitting, let's say I'm on frame five right now and I'm hitting three. If I start drawing, it will automatically pop back to my current frame, which is frame five. And what this is good for is let's say that I want to in between between two frames. Let's say I have, I'm on frame three over here and I have frame two earlier and right after is frame four. And I'm going to draw, let's say, uh, again, let's do it with circles. So let me just erase that. Let's go frame two. Let's draw a circle. Let's go to frame four. Let's draw a circle. And now I'm on frame three. So I'm scrubbing between the two. So what I could essentially do is scrub between 
where I want my in-between to be and draw it as I'm scrubbing and I'm not stopping to hit the keys as you can see but it'll stick to frame 3 and I'll only draw on that frame so I know that I'm not gonna draw on any frame before or after personally I like using in-between mode but I feel like most people might use key mode it's up to you but uh, this is the just that's that's how you use pencil test plus um, essentially the idea is you want to be able to play the animation while you're drawing the animation and in that way I hope that you can get your animation to convey itself a lot better through feeling. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, once you're done your animation feel free to just export it. Uh, it will do its thing and once it's done exporting you will have a GIF and you can share that with the rest of the world. I hope you guys enjoy this software and if you do please share it with other people. Take care and have a great day.